Welcome. Several of you have reached out to me saying that they would like something special to do at home for an achy back, for discomfort in their shoulders and neck, tightness perhaps, and also for some allergy relief in their head and sinus area. And also, several of you reached out and said, I'd just like a state of calmness. I'd like to feel at peace and comfortable in this world. And yoga is the perfect remedy for that. And what you'll find is, is that mindfulness helps calm the nervous system. And therefore, if you feel frazzled, sometimes you just need a little dose of yoga. Now, some of you might need a full hour of yoga as you would get in a normal class. Others might benefit by having smaller sections of yoga more frequently. But the whole idea is, is that yoga itself works for you when you let it. So I encourage you today to let's get started on working on that low back, those shoulders, and our sinus area. And all the while, we're gonna work on calming the nervous system and bringing that state of relaxation and peace. Now, you notice I have a chair with me today. So if you have a chair handy, any, any chair, and your yoga mat, those are the props that you'll need for today. I'm gonna to show you how to use a chair at home in order to make it part of your daily routine. So let's get started. So I'm going to turn the chair away from me to begin with so that I have the use of the back as my prop. I'm going to bring my right foot forward so that I'm close to the chair and the left foot back. And by bending the front knee and looking straight ahead, it gives me the opportunity to have a nice stretch from the left heel all the way up to the glute area, up the back, and into the shoulders. The more I bend that front knee, the deeper the stretch, and well, you'll actually feel it on the outside of the left abdomen area, which is so beneficial for waking up that psoas area. So here we are stretching. Take three deep breaths in this position. Breathing deep is part of the relaxation process. It's a gentle wake up. Make sure that your left heel is down on the ground. And at the end of the third breath, reach the left hand up and reach, reach, reach in the sky as if you're stretching out that left side even deeper. Remember that the things that we do are progressive stretches so that there's no sudden jerks or jolts to the body. That also helps calm the nervous system. Bring your left hand back down and straighten the front leg. Square the hips to your chair so that you start to feel a stretch in the right hamstring. You'll feel a stretch in the front of the right calf. Bring that right hip back and gently lean forward, even keeping those straight legs. Now, by having the chair with the support, it takes the opportunity for muscles to kick in and take over, and instead truly allows a stretch. Breathe deep, look at the seat of the chair, and allow your breath to just continue to deepen that stretch. And then completing that breath, push yourself back up, bend the front leg, and see if you can't go a little deeper. It works every time. So nice, so beneficial. And so, in order for me to keep my eyes on you, I'm going to turn the chair around. And that way I can bring <clears throat> my opposite foot forward, which would be my left foot forward, and my right leg back. Make sure you're doing your opposite because we want to balance both sides of the body. So here we are. <clears throat> Our hands are firmly on the back of the chair. We're going to bend the front leg making sure that the back leg is straight. That right heel, that back leg, the heel is down on the ground. Now you notice I'm using some soft-soled shoes for this practice. There are uh, traditional yoga socks, yoga shoes available, and of course, a very traditional way of doing them barefoot. Stretch into that, bend that front knee a little deeper, 
If you make sure your toes are aligned to the front, then you're going to be able to ensure a distributed stretch for the entire area of the calf. There are three main sections there in the calf, and we want to ensure that our foot is not turned out or turned in. Make sure the toes are straight to the front. Breathe. Take another deep cleansing breath in this position. And then slowly straighten the front leg. Square your hips to your chair. Notice if one side was different than the other. Pause and let that stretch start to happen. And then slowly bring the body down with your gaze going into the seat of the chair. You might notice that the right side of the body and the left side of the body feel different when they stretch. That's normal and that's part of what we do with yoga. We want to balance the body, <clears throat> balance the body for left and right, front and back, top and bottom. We also want to work on flexibility in general and strength. Take one more deep cleansing breath, and then slowly start to bend that front knee, keeping the back heel down, those toes lined up to the front. Your posture's good. There's gentle movement in the uh, trunk of the body itself. And now reach that right hand up. Reach the hand up the same side as your extended leg, and reach, 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 reach. Take three deep breaths in this posture. Breathing during a stretch allows you to smooth into it. It allows the stretch itself to be so much more meaningful. And when you complete that third breath, straighten, bring the hand down, straighten the front leg, and slowly roll around to the front. Pause and notice, how do you feel? Do you feel balanced? Do you feel like you're in control of all the parts of your body? Do you feel like you've activated the different parts? So let's do that. Bring your, hip, your feet a little wider than your hips and let's activate our feet. We do that by turning the muscles on, toning them, forming an arch. Whatever size your arch is, it's perfect size, but we want to turn those muscles on. And then we turn the muscles on around the ankles and into the calves all the way up until we reach the knees. And then we turn those muscles on to where we have strength in our knees, vitality. And then bring that on up the thighs, inner thigh, outer thigh, front, back. And that turns on the glute in the back. Bring your hands around. Make sure that your muscles in the back are activated and toned. Very good. And then bring your hands to your waist, and as you do so, pick the muscles up in the front of the body so that you are absolutely toned from the waist down. Do you notice what that does to the spine? It gives the spine a place to sit, to stay, to be. And it allows the shoulders to relax and to fall into position there on top of the spine, instead of the shoulders trying to hold us up or do all the work. Our arms are free. Our hands are able to do things with greater freedom. Your neck will feel more in aligned. The head has a place to sit. Keep the lower part of the body toned that way as we go through the rest of our exercises. Let's begin by breathing in, a gentle raise of the chin, and exhaling down. Again, breathe in. And exhale down. One more time. Breathe in. This time our hands stay up, fingertips touch, and our hands come to our chest. Let's bring the right hand up, left hand down. Keep your gaze to the front. At this moment in time, you're just starting to open up the front of the chest. Make sure the lower half of the body is activated, tone. Those arches are intact and full and holding you up. Yes, now bring your arms back an inch or two, opening up further in the chest. And let's bring our gaze up to the raised hand. Keep the lower part of the body activated, even as you stretch the neck looking up. Keep that raised hand elevated as if you're pushing the sky or the ceiling up away from you. And then lower your gaze down to your lower hand. Notice that both hands are flat as if you were pushing on the ground and pushing against the ceiling. 
We call this heaven and earth. It's a great stretch for opening up the heart chakra, toning the lower part of the body, and allowing the neck to begin to stretch. Bring your gaze back to neutral, and the hands come back to the chest. Slowly roll your shoulders. Let's take another deep cleansing breath in. Exhale down. Again, breathe in. We can't ever breathe too much. Exhale down and breathe in. This time fingertips touch, hands come to the chest. Be sure that you are still toned in the lower half of the body. Activate those arches, the ankles, the calves, the knees, the thighs, the glutes, the lower part of the abdomen. And let's raise the left hand up and the right hand down. Keep your gaze to the front to neutral so that the chest has a chance to open this side. You might notice that one underarm is tighter than the other. That's perfectly normal because of the functions of the things we do during the course of the day. And yoga is here to stretch us out in an even balanced fashion. Now bring those hands and arms back from the shoulders about an inch or two opening up even wider, giving the chest room to expand, the lungs a chance to have greater space and the heart freedom to pump. They, uh, that entire system, the respiratory and the cardiac system, work 24 seven just for you. Send your heart a little thank you, a little gratitude for all that it does. Bring your head gaze up to your raised hand. Make sure that his hands are both flat and push up on the ceiling as if you're stretching deeper and deeper and deeper, allowing the neck to start to stretch as you bring your gaze up. Take a deep breath here. Keep that lower part of the body toned and then slowly roll your gaze down to your lower hand, making sure that the arm is toned and pushing down on the earth. That might give your raised hand greater freedom to reach even higher. The reason it does that is because we've changed the angle of the neck. So we're taking the neck through all the ranges of motion in order to get some freedom in the, even in the neck as we seemingly are working on shoulders and the upper torso. Bring your gaze back to neutral. Bring your hands back to center against your chest. Pause, take a deep cleansing breath. Now bring your shoulder, your fingertips up to your shoulders. Bring the elbows together in the front. Then bring them back as far as they'll go, keeping your fingertips on the shoulders. Elbows go straight up. Elbows forward. Make sure you're toned in the lower part of your body. Knees are soft, not locking back. Elbows all the way back. Elbows up. Now follow me, elbows go back this time, and then forward, up, back, and forward. Good, shake it out. Let's do a few things before we do one more psoas stretch. So I'm gonna move the chair out of the way so that we have plenty of room in order to do this. So let's bring our stance a little bit wider than our hips, substantially wider as a matter of fact. Your feet are pointed to the front or slightly at an angle, whichever is most comfortable for you. And let's slide our hands down on our knees as our knees flare out. Keep your gaze to the front. Keep the shoulders nice and square. And gently, gently, gently bring your right shoulder to your left knee. So we're crossing the body, stretching the low back, for those of you who ask about your low back, this is an excellent stretch. Come back to center, and then bring the left shoulder to the right knee. Keep those knees flared out, your hands are supported on the knees. A gentle stretch. Come back to center. We're gonna repeat the first movement, right shoulder to left knee. Come a little deeper. Very good. Come back to center, left shoulder to right knee. You might feel one side feel a little tighter than the other. And come back to center, hands stay on your knees 
and a gentle movement left and right of the hips. Keep your gaze out about two or three feet in front of you, just as you sway left and right. Now this is stretching the inner thigh and to a degree the hamstring depending upon the movement phase itself. Allow those stretches to just occur. Just a couple more. Breathe, don't forget to breathe. Don't forget to tone your arches. There's a lot to remember. Come back to center. That's part of mindfulness. Bring your hands all the way down to the floor. Bend your knees to the degree you need to. Now move your hips left to right. It deepens the stretch. Breathe. Keep your arches toned. Keep your gaze between your hands. Come to center and slow, <coughs> excuse me, slowly roll up. One vertebrae at a time. Hands up overhead, fingertips touch. Come to your chest and walk your feet in. Now shake both legs out, good. Shake them out a couple of times. And then let's wipe them off three or four times. Wipe them off. This is a gentle forward fold. Clean your hands on the floor. Wipe the other leg off three or four times. And then slowly roll up. One vertebrae at a time. Hands come up overhead. Fingertips touch. Hands to your chest. Put your right hand directly on top of your heart. Your left hand directly on top of that hand. Pause, close your eyes. Just take three deep cleansing breaths. Now part of being inverted like that is boosting the immune system. It also it plays a major role in resetting the nervous system. Therefore, you are doing a lot of work. You might feel like your heart was activated a bit. You might feel like it was harder to breathe a little bit. That's perfectly normal not to be concerned. Now as we place our right hand on our heart and our left hand over that right hand, that acts as a mechanism to calm the body. Bring both hands down in front of the body in the center line, hands crossed one over the other, the right on the bottom, and slowly just bring those hands all the way up over the head and fountain out. Do it again. It's as if we're bringing our energy up, our center line, and letting it fountain out over us. As if we are magically, let's do it again, cleaning our own aura, boosting our own energy field, allowing ourselves to have freedom. Pause and relax. Now let's go back to our chair. I'm gonna pull the chair around here in front of me because I wanna do something that stretches the psoas, but balances the body in a little bit different way. So here I am, the back of the chair is to the back of the room, and I'm gonna come sit in one corner. There's space between me and the back of the chair. So I'm sitting just over the edge. And at that point in time, I wanna take the back arm and wrap it around the back of the chair. Now the inside foot, which in my case here is the left foot, is solid down on the ground. I want to make sure that I am safe and secure and anchored. And then I'm going to slide that front leg all the way back to where notice I'm getting a bit, quite a bit of a stretch here. Very good. And I, but I still have the ability to put weight in the back foot and weight in the front foot. So I'm going to bring the outside arm all the way up and gently rise up out of the chair and breathe. Three deep cleansing breaths. Breathe in deeply. The deeper you breathe, the more you are massaging your internal organs, the more you're stretching there in the psoas area. I'm completing that third breath. Lean to the back of the chair. That chair is going to support you. You're balanced. You're strong. You can do this. Breathe. Take your time. And when you complete that third breath, bring the arm back down, back into neutral, and turn around and sit to the front. Notice the improvement of stretch on the front side of that body that you had just stretched there in the front. 
It's very important that you own it, that you claim it, you establish it as part of who you are going forward. So <coughs> let's turn and go to the other side. So again, I'm sitting toward the one quarter of the chair. I take the back arm, wrap it around the chair. I make sure that this front foot is anchored firmly on the ground, <clears throat> and then I slide the front leg all the way back. I'm on my foot and my toes. I raise the outside arm all the way up and come up, breathing deep. Three deep cleansing breaths in this posture. We're stretching the psoas. We're gonna take it deeper, but this is the beginning of that stretch. It allows us to ease into stretches as opposed to making them sudden. We want to be progressive in our stretch. Completing the third breath, gently lean to the back and three more deep cleansing breaths. Breathe. This is very deep work. It is detoxifying. It's very beneficial and extremely um, unique in how it works with the vagus nerve. All the organs are benefited and establish their peace and harmony, unity, with this type of a movement. Completing that third breath, come all the way down, and now let's sit to the front. Put your palms on your knees, take a deep cleansing breath, and relax. Gently rub the, tip, the tops of your knees with your palms. We're going to do a little sinus work before we get down on our mats. So <clears throat> the first thing I want you to do is turn your palms over and activate the tips of your palms. Activate the tips of your fingers, forgive me. <clears throat> we do that by rubbing our thumb across the tips of the fingers. This brings our attention fully to the fingertips. It turns on the sensory capability of each finger and we acknowledge, wow, there's a lot there to be felt, a lot to do. And we, everything that we manifest, we do with our hands. We brush our teeth with our hands, we make our pancakes with our hands, we drive our car with our hands, we comb our child's hair with our hands. Everything we do, we involve our hands in some way. And here we're giving them a little break. Now let's activate the palms of the hands. So put your right hand out, take your left, two four fingers, two fingers, and slowly make a circle right in the dead center of the palm. Connect to your palm. Connect to who you are there in your palm. This is not an exercise in moving. This is a connection. We want to connect deeply to ourselves. This is the depth of mind-body. And then roll the other palm over. Doesn't that palm feel different? Take the two fingers and just make a circle in your left palm. Feel how different the two palms feel. They have different functions. They perform different tasks. They are different, but they are so similar. And together they form a complement, a unity, an integration, a capability, a wholeness. And now our hands are activated. Turn them over, let them kind of just sit there for a second. You may feel tingling. That's normal too. Extend your arms out, palms up, and then roll your palms over, bringing the thumbs all the way down as far as you can stretch, allowing that stretch to take place in the forearm and on up above the elbow into the upper arm. And then roll it over one more time. Deepen the stretch as you push your thumbs away from each other. Notice that your arms are as straight as you comfortably can do them, and then bring the arms back down. Now bring the right hand over, and on the left arm, pull the tissue of the left arm toward the center line of the body. This allows the arm to release tension. The myofascia chain of the arm can actually tighten up and hold a tremendous amount of tension in it. In order to get a total release in our neck and shoulders later, we want to release the myofascia that's bound in the arm in order that we can not have that creeping back up into the neck and shoulder area. 
all the way up and down. Take your time. Be sure and do the hand. And then wipe that arm off three or four times. And then clean the hand on the floor. Pause, notice, does one arm feel different than the other? You might feel circulation changing or shifting. That's perfectly normal. You're just establishing new clean pathways for your own energy to go through. Bring both hands back up. Roll the thumbs down. Roll the thumbs all the way over. Breathe. And then roll the thumbs back down one more time. Really stretch. And then bring the left hand over to the right arm and pull the tissue of the right arm toward the center line of the body. Be gentle around your joints, but still be firm and deliberate, intentional, so that you're releasing the Maya fascia that might be tight or bound. Be sure and do the hand. Work the entire arm area. If you find a tight spot, stay with it a little bit. Stay in that area long enough until you feel a gentle release. And then wipe that arm off three or four times and clean the hand on the floor. Pause. You're in your chair. Relax. Sit back. Rest for a moment. And take a deep cleansing breath. Bring your palms back up. Let's use our thumbs to just re connect to our fingertips one more time and then use those fingertips to tap above the eyebrows tapping gently there in the cranium area remember that tapping or massage always brings an increase of circulation and circulation increases nutrients and oxygen as well as waste removal tap the sides of the eyes so in essence, we are tapping our skull area to increase circulation. And this gentle tapping acts like a little vibration that allows anything that might be of congestion to break up and flow away. Breathe deep and tap under your eyes. Deliberately swallow two or three times. By swallowing two or three times, you're relaxing the internal parts of the head of the system that we're, we're uh, uh, working with. Tap in front of your ears, directly in front of your ears. Sometimes with allergies or the pollen season, we will feel a tightness in our ears. This gentle tapping increases the circulation there. Bring one finger of each hand, tap under the nose and under the bottom lip. A gentle tap there. Again, tapping there in the sinus region of the jaw. A gentle tap, swallow again, you may need it. Now tap right behind the ears. Sit firmly in your chair and tap gently behind your ears and then smooth the sides of your neck. As if you were touching a rose, be gentle. We're not going deep, we're not going into the muscle. We're actually working the, the um, um, lymphatic system. We're allowing the gentle touch to move lymph, lymph system down the neck. Work the front, work the back. And then come across your shoulders once or twice. Shake your hands out. And then find your collarbones and tap directly under your collarbones. A gentle tap there on the kidney meridian point called K27. It is our detoxification access point for the kidneys. And this gentle tapping just activates the circulation there and reminds the whole kidney system, hey, it's time for you to detox the body even deeper, more thoroughly. Now that also means that we have to drink more water in order to allow our kidneys to do their work. Bring your palms down, soften your eyes, close your eyes, and take three deep cleansing breaths. Swallow as needed. You may feel a gentle release of congestion, especially if you're sensitive to the pollen and to the allergy season that we're in. And look to the right. Bring your chin down. Bring your chin back to neutral, but still looking to the right. Bring your chin all the way up. 
bring your chin back to neutral, but you're still looking to the right. Stay right there with your head. Drop the left arm behind you. That deepens the stretch just a little bit more. You may feel it even in the chest. That's perfectly normal too. Bring your left arm back around. Bring your head back to neutral. Gently rub the neck again as if you're massaging the lymphatics, touching those roses. Imagine that your neck's made out of petals of roses. You're just being gentle as you touch them. Bring your hands back down. Look to the left. Take a deep breath. Bring your chin down to your shoulder. Bring your chin back up to neutral, but you're still looking to the left. Bring your chin all the way up. You're still looking to the left. Take a deep breath. Bring your chin back to neutral. You're still looking to the left. Now take your right arm and bring it behind you. Notice how that deepens the stretch on the side of the neck. We're working it gently and progressively so that our neck doesn't go into spasm, but our neck has a chance to go through the full range of motion and to relax. Bring the right hand back to your lap. Bring your gaze around back to neutral and gently rub the sides of your neck. Remember that as we rub or massage, now we're going a little deeper this time because we want to increase the circulation. We've stretched the neck thoroughly. We want to increase the circulation so that we have more oxygen and nutrients and at the same time increase the waste system. Very good. Breathe deep. Bring your hands back down. Fingertips on your shoulder. Remember the stretches that we did earlier of going front and back and up? We want to repeat that, but we want to go in complete circles. So let's do some circles here with just the shoulders moving. And the reason for this is because we want to distribute the synovial fluid throughout the joint of the shoulder. Our shoulders get a lot of movement, but most of the time they're repetitious movements in the same directions. And the entire shoulder joint doesn't have a chance to get even distribution of the synovial fluid. If we do 12 complete circles, one more, in each direction, reverse the direction of your circles, and slowly just move through it. You're moving slowly and deliberately. It's not fast and it's not short. It's a full smooth movement. Because think of it as if we're trying to gently soothe out, smooth out the uh, fluid that's in there, and at the same time, make sure that every single part is cared for. Doing this on a regular basis can help prevent shoulder discomfort and ensure that the shoulders can move completely. One more circle and bring your hands down. Bring your gaze down to look at your hands on your knees. Take three deep cleansing breaths. Remember that breathing is calming to the nervous system. You're giving your nervous system a chance for it to reset for it to be able to do all the things that it's capable of doing. Gently when you're done, let's come up off of our chair, set it aside. We're not going to need it anymore today. And then let's come all the way down on our mat. I'm going to take my little soft yoga shoes off, set them aside, and I'm gonna come all the way down on the mat and I invite you to as well. Begin with your feet flat on the floor and your knees are bent. Pick your head up and gently lengthen the neck to allow the head to come back down on the mat. The chin is a little bit closer to the chest. And then move your shoulders away from your ears. And at the same time, bring your shoulder blades underneath you and bring them together in the back. Now, deliberately relax your shoulders. You'll feel like there's a lot of space between your ears and your shoulders. You'll feel like you have a decompression of the neck actually going on, and that's what we're looking for. Very good. Now, at this point in time, <laughs> let's move our hips left to right so that we gently grow in length 
Because we move the upper body slightly, we want to give the lower body a place to grow, expand into. And then slowly rotate your legs out one at a time. And let's tighten the glutes. Tighten both glutes simultaneously. Tight, 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 tight. Now relax. We're going to do that again, but make sure that you are evenly distributing the toning of the muscle. Tighten both sides. Make sure they're the right is equal to the left in the degree of intensity of the tightness. And make sure the top of the glute and the bottom of the glute are equal. Now relax. We'll do that one more time, making sure that the glute is equally toned. Tighten your glutes. Tight, 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 and relax. And then stretch your legs just a little bit. Let's roll the ankles just to complete the whole system there of the body and reverse your direction of your ankle rolls. Breathe. Very good. And let's bring both knees to our chest. Make sure that our hands are behind our, uh, our, our calves, that they're firmly on the thighs, and a gentle rock side to side. If we put our hands on top of the calf, that adds uh, extra stress to the knee and we want to preserve the health and integrity of the knee to the longest possible point by not having any unnecessary wear and tear. Come to stillness. Now we're going to rock on our back, on our spine, and give our spine a nice gentle massage. So we're going to rock four or five times and then come to a seated posture that looks like this. One, two, three, four, and five. Extend your legs all the way up. Very good. Now we're gonna do some staff positions here. So make sure that your legs are lined up, your hips are square, and move any of the fleshy part of the tissue so that you are on your sits bones there on your mat. And let's bring the left leg across the right leg and pull it in nice and tight. Notice that the left foot is flat on the ground and that the back is nice and straight as we lean into that leg that we have bent and pulling into our torso. And use both hands to pull it in securely. Very good. Now in that position, I want you to take the right leg and raise it up and down, up and down, up and down. Very good. Very, very good. <clears throat> We're pulling that left knee in even tighter. Keep your right arm on that leg and use your left hand to come out to the outside and tap or massage the outside of the left side of the body. It'll be your glute area, your IT band, <clears throat> anything and everything that might be tight or congested. Very good. Just increase the circulation there ever so slightly. Keep your back straight. Breathe deep. Raise the left hand all the way up and a gentle wave forward and back. Aren't you glad we did those arm stretches earlier? Very good. This is working the beginning of the carpal tunnel area. Now gently make small circles with that raised wrist. Make sure those circles are deliberate, smooth, and gentle. Reverse the direction of your circles. We want to, again, work that entire wrist and hand area. Very good. Now bring the raised hand behind you. Look over your left shoulder. Breathe. Raise and lower your head. We're stretching the neck even deeper. Breathe. Drop the left hand down on the mat. Look over the left shoulder even deeper. Open and close your mouth. Just open and close your mouth deliberately. Keep your left foot flat on the floor. Come to stillness and slide the left hand in close to the hip. Try to touch your tailbone if you can. Your gaze remains over the left shoulder. Now bring your gaze all the way over to the right shoulder. Breathe. Nod your head forward and back. 
Make sure your spine is nice and straight. Bring your gaze back to neutral. Bring the left hand around. Pull the knee in tighter. Let's give it one more tap on the outside. And then lower that leg all the way down. Aggressively rub the top of your left quad, the top of the left thigh. Aggressively rub it. It might be tight. We're working it out. Very good. Now let's bring the right knee up to the chest. Notice that we've pulled it in nice and tight. The right foot is flat on the floor. <clears throat> As you pull it in, now let's use the right hand to tap or massage the outside of the right side of the body. Just increasing that circulation, getting more nu nutrients and more oxygen to this area. If you find a sore spot, stay with it and raise that right hand all the way up. As we raise that arm up, wave forward and back gently. As we do that, we talked about what we were doing for our hand and wrist earlier. We're also giving permission for the lymphatics to drain down the arm, underneath the armpit, down into the chest, and across the torso. Circle that wrist deliberately and smoothly. Our lymphatics rely on us for our movement because there is no heart to push the lymphatic system around the body. Instead, it's entirely the movement that we do. Reverse the direction of your circles, reverse the direction of your wrist circles. So our lymphatics rely on us to have a diverse and sufficient movement pattern in order to cleanse the body, keep it flowing. Bring that arm down, reach behind you, Let's nod our head up and down. You'll probably feel a stretch there in the front of the elbow. That's normal. We're also opening up the front of the shoulder. Drop that hand down as far behind you as you can go. Keep your spine nice and straight. Look over that right shoulder. Now open and close your jaw. This is working on the TMJ area. The more that we open and close that jaw thoroughly, the more um, we break up any tension that we hold in the jaw area. Slide the back hand in close to the tailbone. Make sure the spine is straight. Look over the right shoulder. Nod gently. Breathe. Straight spine. Keep the right foot down flat on the floor. Bring your gaze all the way over and look behind you. Look over the left shoulder. Look all the way behind you. Feel the stretch, finishing off the stretch of the neck. Bring the gaze back to neutral. One more tap on the outside of the right side of the body. Bring that leg all the way down. Aggressively rub the top of the thigh. Did one's thigh feel tighter than the other? That sometimes happens. We have the opportunity to work the body part to the degree it needs. This is called self-care, self-regulation. We want to be there for our body the same way it's there for us. Let's bend the leg and go in and work right behind the knee. Now we sometimes experience pain in the front of the knee or the sides, but this general tissue underneath the back side of the knee is where we can increase the circulation provide some relief into the knee area. And then come down behind the knee, underneath the knee, come down an inch and a half to two inches. And there's a marma point in the ancient Ayurveda. It was the heart boosting point. And we want to work that area there. If it's tender, it means that you need more of it. You should do it several times a day. And then work the entire calf area. Stretch that leg out, wipe the whole leg off three or four times. Clean your hands on the floor. Bend the other leg and let's go in and massage that tender area right there behind the knee. We want to balance both legs. Is there a difference in how one side feels compared to the other? Remember, we're trying to balance the body, left to right, front to back, top to bottom. So we want to find all these areas that are different and give them some special attention. 
Bring your thumb down underneath the back of the calf, an inch and a half or two inches, and just gently boost that heart point there from the marma system of the ancient Ayurvedic. And then gently massage the whole calf. You've done a lot of work today. This is very detoxifying. So for me, it's lots of water. Extend your leg out, wipe it off three or four times. And clean your hands. One arm up, left arm up, right foot up, left foot up. And roll all the way back, both knees to your chest, a little rock side to side. If you like, go into happy baby. I'll just stay here in this posture. Come to stillness. And let's keep your right knee against your chest, extend the left leg out. Put it down on the floor and really stretch completely and totally in the groin area, allowing the body to stretch. One more deep breath. Bring that knee in, extend the right leg out, lay it down on the floor, stretch completely and deeply in the groin area. Breathe. And when you're ready, extend the left leg out. Find a place of peace and comfort for your body. Perhaps lengthening your neck again, perhaps straightening your shoulders. Let's go ahead and tighten our glutes one more time and then relax them. I'll do it again. Tighten again and relax. And then allow the body to just settle into a nice state of relaxation. Taking three deep breaths, reflect on all the things that you did today. The standing posture, the stretching across the body, the spinal twist that we did there at the very beginning, the activation of your hands, the alignment and the activation of the lower half of your body that gave your spine freedom to rest in its foundation, the release for the shoulders, movement, breath, proper relaxation. Reflect on everything that you did. Claim the benefits of every single movement you made, every thought that you had. Bring them inward, bring the benefits inward. Anything that you're ready to release or discard, anything that no longer serves you, just let it drop away. Allow your body to sort things out, to find a place for all the things that are of benefit to you, and to discard the things that perhaps are old or used or no longer serve you or were never yours to start with. Maybe you're carrying a burden that's not yours. Just let it drop away. Let the body relax into a, a, a state that allows it to self-heal, to nourish itself, to self-regulate. But that which needs to be renewed can be renewed using the inner pharmacy of the body allowing the nervous system to connect fully, completely, giving every single little nerve this rest, this respite, that it can now interface with the rest of the nervous system in a calm and gentle fashion. And no matter where you go throughout the rest of the day, allow your body to reclaim this moment, this state of relaxation, Peace. It's a facet of taking your yoga off the mat. It's there for you any moment, any time, any place. Gently roll your head to the right. Take a deep cleansing breath. And bring your head back to neutral. Roll your head to the left. Take a deep cleansing breath. Roll your head back to neutral. 
slowly move your fingers, your toes. And when you're ready, roll to one side or the other and use your arms and your hands to cradle your head and your neck. But your neck and head are completely supported at all times. Your knees are bent slightly so that there's no discomfort on your low back. Pause and allow the body to assimilate here. Just let your breathing deepen. And when you're ready, use your hands to assist you. Push yourself up into a seated posture facing the front. Your legs can be straight out, your legs can be bent, whatever is good for you. Palms are on your knees if possible. Your gaze is soft and gentle. Allow your eyes to even close if you like. Allow the eyes to relax down into the sockets. And allow the cheeks to relax. Allow the ears to gently relax. Again, with it being pollen season, you may experience some release of congestion in the head. That's perfectly fine. Just swallow several times. Allow the body to balance. We're going to take three deep cleansing breaths in together, and we'll raise our hands as we do so to lift the ribcage. Breathe in. Breathing in the goodness of the day, bring that down into your body. Again, breathing in the goodness of the time that you spent here today doing this exercise. And one last time, breathing in, fingertips touch, hands come to your chest. Namaste. Thank you very much for joining me today. I look forward to seeing you again soon.